Hello there. Let me turn down the, the hologram thing. Hello there, and welcome to Star Wars GM Tips, a series that uh, is a complete knockoff of the the D and D style GM tip series that you've seen. Matt Coville did an amazing series on here. Uh, Matt Coville, Matt Mercer did an amazing series for GM Tips, and I really, really enjoyed that. Inspired me uh, actually to start GMing after watching a little bit of Critical Role. And then Matt Coville's done an amazing series as well. But one of the things that I've noticed uh, and how to be a great GM is another great. Uh, you know what? Why are you even here? You just watch those guys. They're amazing. But none of those channels uh, that I love so much dives into my, not very well, not very much at least, not very deeply, uh, my favorite universe for role playing. And I've been role playing in this universe for well over a decade, more so. The, the whole point of this series, here's the pitch here, uh, is that it is a, a open forum for us to discuss the Star Wars universe from a role playing and GMing perspective, from a, from a player perspective, uh, and from a GM guiding your players through an epic story or tale that you've built out for them, or maybe it's just like a one shot or two shot, uh, high adventure, Clone Wars style, Jedi, Sith, uh, fighting droids, just bringing you into that universe a little bit more, adding a little bit more detail, talking about how the systems of the universe work, the lore of the universe, and how we can manipulate and exploit that to tell awesome tales and stories. Now, it doesn't matter if you're playing the D20 version, uh, if you're playing the tabletop version, you're playing uh, Gary's mod, if you're playing Arma, it is an amazing time uh, if you're uh, amazing time for role players in the Star Wars universe right now because there are so many options for us. If you're like me, uh, I played Star Wars uh, Galaxies back in the day, and that was my first instance of actually like RPing in this universe. My first role playing uh, experience was actually in Ultima Online way back, you know, one of the one of the earliest of MMOs. Uh, but eventually, that kind of built through to Star Wars Galaxies and playing through years of that with the. Uh, uh, the great uh, Dagger Wolves, which was a special ops group of the Rebels. We'll talk about all this stuff in later episodes. Uh, and eventually playing with the the Crate Dragons and Tatooine and the Moss Synth and role-playing community and just detailed, rich stories of heroes and villains and, and everything in between. So this series, though, is for us to have that communication, to have that conversation about you know all the cool shit that's in, excuse me, all the cool stuff that is in uh, the Star Wars universe and how we can use it to tell better stories and talk about some mechanics. Many things that I will be referencing uh, is in what I'm currently GMing for, er, the big book here, which is Edge of the Empire. Um, this is a tabletop role-playing game. Uh, there are actually three different versions of the rule book, depending on what kind of campaign you're running. Um, they're basically all the same. So it's like Edge, it's Edge of the Empire. It's um, Rebel, uh, Birth of the Rebellion, no, no, that is wrong. That is not the name. And I always forget it because of all the modding content that we do on the channel. Age of Rebellion, excuse me, which is the other rule book, and Force and Destiny, which is the Force one. Uh, the only thing that are different in the rule books really is there's a, there's a few small differences, uh, and then they've got more resources for you, more character classes for if you want to play like Jedi, then you wanted to go to the Force book. If you want to play more uh, Rebel Alliance soldiers, then you probably want to go with the Rebel book. And then of course, Edge of the Empire is your smugglers and your criminal crime organizations and living on the rim and just trying to make it, man. And more Firefly-esque campaigns, how I've always seen that, so. Uh, in this first episode, we're going to ramble a lot, as we have already managed to accomplish. Check that off the list. And we're going to talk about uh, prepping a campaign a little bit and what you, what as a GM, uh, what you, that set, that, that, that the easiest way to, what I've learned about prepping a larger campaign. Now, you can do short campaigns or long campaigns, but if you're planning a long one, and I love micro level detail, right? Like, I love making my campaigns about those four or five players that I have and giving getting decent backgrounds from them and then spinning those backgrounds into their, their, their tale a bit, right? So a little bit more, um, uh, focused on their day-to-day -day lives and survival and giving the players a sense of mortality that Star Wars universe, if you hadn't guessed, is a deadly, deadly universe where life is cheap. In A New Hope, almost every main character is introduced by someone getting offed, uh, be it Lord Vader crushing somebody's neck, if it's Han Solo straight up murdering a guy in a cantina, uh, Obi-Wan cutting off a dude's arm. So life is cheap in the Star Wars galaxy, and I like to represent that in my campaign. So mine are very, very deadly, particularly with the FFG rules. Battles are fast, and in two or three turns, your players, a player can be downed no problem, depending on what they're up against. I mean, it is 
it is rough and designed to be that way. And it's part of the fun using the narrative dice system. And we'll do a whole video on narrative dice system and, and why I love the FFG system and some of the house rules and stuff like that we're gonna go into. But uh, what I have found is that if you're gonna do a longer campaign, I find picking an area on a map, maybe even drawing your own based on the galactic map is a little bit less stressful for the GM. The Star Wars universe is huge and a lot of people have bits of the lore in their heads about every one of the planets and the factions and they know little bits and pieces here. And I have found if you give the players the whole galactic map, then they're probably gonna be like, I wanna go to all the things that I know as a player and not as a character. So giving the players a, a, a map that is areas that you have researched and kind of come up with, or maybe it's just one planet and a few cities. We did this with the Tatooine map for the Edge of the Empire series we did on the channel a while back. Um, they had cities, every city was a little bit different. And I had a, just enough of like, here's some of the buildings there, here are the major players for them to go and explore and make it feel like a living place for them. Um, so that little bit of prep is really useful, having a little bit of a map for them to, to kind of explore, knowing the areas that they can go to if you're gonna do a campaign. If it's just a one shot, don't worry about it. You know, say, okay, well, you know, your objective is there, so you guys gotta go there. And you're gonna have to do a little bit of guiding, kind of pressing them along to say, hey, uh, and and if you if you if you bait it right, it'll make it feel like they're always choosing the direction that they want to go, and not you know kind of where the story is supposed to be written. Because you've only got four hours to play, and you got to get to that big finale, uh, or at least that some way to get to that last big arc if you can make it. Uh, the other thing that I've, I've found is just have a list of not just names, which I think every GM tip series will tell you have a list of names so that you as a GM don't have to be like uh, his name is. George, his name is George, uh, and you have that pause, and it's obvious that you're making it up. Have a list of names, but also, for Star Wars, have a list of the races. And I'll, I'll put a link in the description for an image of a lot of the races in Star Wars, including uh, the name of the race and a picture of each one. That will make your world space feel so much more alive if you can not only describe the, the character's name and his appearance, and boom, he's a Devorian. Ah, uh, okay, he's a Bith. He's a, you know, he's whatever this is. And then here's the details about the character that, that kind of tell you a little bit about his personality and, and paint the picture for your characters. Have the races on another sheet. And if the players don't know a particular race, and that's fine, it, it's okay to send them a Google image if you're playing online or have an image ready to be like, yeah, well, this is, this is what that race looks like. Um, and they'll be like, oh, okay, now I get it. And that just paints an even better picture in their head. Um, don't, you know, it, it, Star Wars Universe, unlike D&D, &D, it's a lot harder to say, okay, well, you know, it's just, it's a, it's a dwarf. Okay, you know what a dwarf is. You've watched Lord of the Rings probably, or, um, you know, it's, it's an elf. We don't, in Star Wars, we don't have that as much as, as the fantasy games. So you may have to pop out an image uh, or get ready to describe that, what a Devorian is uh, to a player who doesn't know. Uh, but have that race list on hand and, and images. I find that endlessly useful, a little printout of at least like 12 or 14 of the races that you can access real quick along with names. Uh, so when they go and they're like, and I, every time, uh, oh, what's the bartender's name? What's the waiter's name? Okay, what's he look like? Uh, how old is he? Like they, they, every time, every time, my characters will ask, you know, what is that random NPC's name? Where is he from? And you'll be surprised how quickly your cast of NPC characters grows and how quickly they will want to go and see that guy that you had no background for, even though the, uh, the other guy had like all of the prep for him and they just ignore him or they shoot him in the face before he even says hello and he's gone. And you're like, okay, that's fine. Thanks guys, appreciate it. Prep, that kind of prep is, is fantastic. Uh, and you're in the Star Wars universe, so they're doing a lot of traveling. If you're making a small map of a series of planets and a cluster, I'm using currently the Namadi Corridor. Uh, it's got a great just list of actual lore planets uh, that you can go to the Wikipedia if you want and grab a lot of resources from, of like what are these planets like? And if they're blank, they don't have anything, go ahead and make stuff up or just remove them from your custom map. That's what I find. Uh, if they're just not that interesting and you don't have anything, the creative juices are flowing, pull them out of there. Don't put them in. If they're not interesting, don't put them in. Uh, or have them there and be like, yeah, it's a rock. It's 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 a standard planet. It's it's grassland, and uh, you can go there if you like. There's probably a refueling base there, and you know, just have some ideas of like what in the universe might or may not be in any one of these worlds. Uh, and if you don't have a clue or it's not interesting, don't put it. Don't put it on the map, and they won't try to go there. Hopefully, hopefully. If not. 
Uh, there's lots of resources for random charts on maps that you can have like what kind of terrain they have there or what could potentially be there. Uh, it's always good to have in your back pocket a couple of scenarios that might be of interest that don't really have a place in the story uh, so much as just a one-shot scenario in your longer campaign. I found that to be really, really useful as well. Uh, but there are so many things that I want to talk about in this particular series uh, about planning out larger campaigns, about the mechanics of the um, the boss system, the ship identification system, about how the Empire gathers intelligence is another example, how the Rebel Alliance operated in the earliest days of the Rebel uh, military with their ground troops, with their navy. That stuff may seem uh, a little arbitrary and a little bit just like obscure, but it actually makes great, great things for storytelling. If you know how the Empire gathers its intelligence, then suddenly you know how the players can accept, intercept that intelligence, how um, you can start weaving that knowledge into your story so your players learn about it through actions and doing. And then once they know that information, we'll start to use it to manipulate the world space. Ah, you know how you know certain information is transferred, how the technology that 70s future tech works and the limitations of that can be exploited by the players as long as you as a GM build the world out so it's consistent. So I want to talk about all that stuff and, and the obscure stuff in Star Wars and how you as a GM as a role player as a player can can manipulate that and have fun with it. So that's what this series is about. So let me know in the comments below if you have certain topics that just kind of like, oh, I got an idea. I'd love to hear about this, talk about this. Uh, let me know in the comments. All right, guys, I will see you in the next episode of Star Wars GM Tips. Bye, everybody.